Legal budget is on page 25. I can have a motion to move $235,600. I'll make that motion to move $235,600 as the legal budget <coughs> line. Second. Okay. Discussion? And we will leave the presentation for Attorney Gerald. Oh, thank you. Um, this particular budget is down by 1.31%. Uh, it represents the uh, lowest budget that is presented to you uh, since the year um, 2004. Uh, the, uh, there are two sides to the budget. The first side is the more or less the in-house side. The second side, which is on page 25, is the um, the out of the outside part, um, except for litigation expenses. So, um, what you're seeing is that uh, <coughs> on an hourly basis, my time, all expenses included, is about $66 an hour. Ooh. For Attorney Robertson, it's about $44 an hour. Nothing. And so if we were to go to outside counsel for representation, the average, I, when I, all the different negotiated rates I have with outside counsel is about $190 an hour. So you can see the more that we do, the more savings we achieve and the less we spend for outside counsel and so at the higher rates. And so, for instance, we're, you're, you're seeing on that second page that uh, the second half that we're actually forecasting a, a decrease in collective bargaining costs uh, down to uh, 15,000. That's, that's actually a product also of the fact that we're probably not going to be negotiating six contracts next year uh, like we're doing now. But I want you to know that Attorney Robertson is, is, uh, works primarily in the labor area and sits in on all those negotiations and helps to coordinate them. Uh, for other labor costs, that was $20,000 forecast uh, this, for this year. Next year, we're contemplating that will go down to $10,000. And um, the one area on the outside council that is going up is in the uh, outside council fees forecast for 25,000, that's now up to, for next year, 41,600. That's directly attributable to the very, to the Seabrook cases. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that's an area where I'm going to need outside council assistance because it is such a very specialized area. Um, and uh, the other side is certainly going to spend the money to fight this all the way. And, and we should too. We've got the $1.6 million exposure and we really need to fight back. And so that's where you, that figure comes in. Um, on our side of it, uh, that is the first page, uh, the change that is the uh, new to this uh, there are some small increases that are um, due to uh, things like increases in our online research charges. That's about $350 of an increase. Um, Attorney Robertson has now been a member of the bar for, for three years in New Hampshire and her bar dues go up by uh, now $130. And so that's the kind of increase you see there to the smaller items. Um, the, the thing we've got here is a new part-time wages position. This is someone that um, <coughs> Selectman Woolsey asked all the department heads, what do you need for your operation? Attorney Robertson and I have been here for, it's going on 11 years. Um, we don't have any clerical help at all. And so you're, you're actually uh, decreasing the value of the money you're spending by not having at least some clerical help. 
and so what this factors in is a 16 hour a week person at I believe $16 an hour to provide some clerical help. It's, it's my hope that uh, uh, this will help with uh, filing, which is something we, we don't have the luxury of doing, <laughs> and uh, at times uh, production of, of uh, work itself. Um, we're, we're certainly not going back to the old days where each attorney would have their own dedicated clerical person. Uh, it doesn't work that way anymore and so much of our work is communicated through email which uh, we've had to become used to but nevertheless when you get into heavy duty litigations um, you, uh, you basically clerical help becomes very important uh, or you can't sustain the effort. Um, I also want to say that Hampton is a wonderful community and it has many challenges where we're unlike many others because our population, while 15,000 people a year full year round, becomes over 100,000 in the summertime, and the problems uh, we have the problems basically of the city, not the problems of a town. <coughs> and so, uh, one of the nice things about my job is is that uh, you, it has tremendous variety, and practically every day you get something that you don't expect and it's unusual and uh, in order to deal with those challenges you you can't just set them aside you have to address them and uh, when it comes to things like filing and organization of uh, you, you it becomes a luxury <laughs> that you can't afford and so that's where in response to uh, Selectman Woolsey's challenge uh, we're factoring in a person at the, at the very low number of hours that has no benefits but nevertheless is a very important thing. I would also say that um, we're not trying to be territorial with this person. Uh, there are many times where uh, Fred's office has projects where he has only one staff person really, Christina, who's running the entertainment licenses, the updates of the code book, uh, the calls. Uh, she does a tremendous amount of work that uh, Fred depends on and when he gets uh, rush items, I would expect that this person would help out with that. And the same is true with finance. It's more of a team effort than just, you know, here's the legal department, here's the finance department. Mm -hmm. um, we, we got a lot done with less, and I, I would help, hope this person, I would look for a person who would be a team player to help them too. And so that's basically the biggest difference in terms of uh, what you see here over, over prior years. Nevertheless, we're still below last year's budget, and as I say, says it all. Uh, is anything you wanted to add to that? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go around the table. I'll start over here, Brian. Um, on that subject, is does like UNH or or some other area have people that would want to get into the clerical or want to be involved? Is that a source you've looked at? I'm not specifically saying you want to, but I mean, is, you know, someone going in, an intern. attorney who want to help out with something like that? Um, they, um, like the credits or something? Well, we uh, certainly wouldn't shut the door to such a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the UNH Law School is actually up in Concord, which makes it a little more oh. challenging. Uh, the formerly known as Franklin Pierce Law <coughs> School, uh, a great institution, and uh, I uh, I look for a bit of continuity. I'm hoping we can get continuity in this position, so that it, it, another thing about it is it's highly confidential. I, I can't have just anybody come in because uh, I have to run a ship that <laughs> is a tight one. Isn't that the same? Right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Okay. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, I got a, a question. Sure. Actually, it's about the same size town as Hampton, right? Uh, not when you yeah. consider our what, well, what we have in the summer. Well, they get tourists too, but okay. But the year-round population is 
I just happen to look in their annual report and I see they're showing legal costs of 70000 uh, What are they doing? That, or what are we doing that they're not doing? Well, I think we have, we, we are a totally different animal than an exeter. We, we have problems that are commensurate with, the, with, with having a, a gigantic uh, commercial engine down at the beach that has condominium developments that we review the documents for, planning issues that are unbelievable. Uh, the 70 foot height is just the tip of the iceberg, mm -hmm. really. We, we've, we've got something totally unlike a small town. Uh, and we have, for instance, we have a police force that has, has to ramp up and deal with this, uh, a fire department that has to ramp up every year. We're not the only department that's affected by the way we are. You just see it manifested in different ways. It's a great community, but very challenging. Mark? Great job explaining the way my one question. Thank you. <coughs> All I can say is it could be a pleasure walking into your office and seeing you in not stacks of paper. <laughs> oh, did that disappear, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> uh, it's also the case, and this has been done with the building department records and planning yeah. records that uh, <coughs> Fred has uh, very nicely uh, compiled those in one place, but also put them on microfilm. And uh, I'm hoping to do the same thing. Yeah. I got nowhere to put things at the moment. But you guys do a fantastic job, both of you, and I really you. appreciate it. So you, you better big help to me. You? I totally support the clerical support. I've been involved in projects where you know, we eliminated clerks and we had managers sitting in rooms taking twice as long to do it. So I totally support you. Thank you. I'm gonna pass on this one for the moment and go to Joe. I have a question on <coughs> the, uh, your bar dues. Sure. Is that something that different towns they pay also? <coughs> Just, I, the question, the reason I'm asking is I have professional license in three different states and the company I work for expects me to pay for those licenses. So I'm just asking that question. Yeah, we're, we're like other legal departments throughout the state that work for municipalities, we, we can't have any other clients. We're totally dedicated to, to Hampton. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's part of the expense of, um, <coughs> of having a dedicated staff, I would say. Okay. You, are <coughs> you are managed by the Board of Selectmen, the reports of the Board of Selectmen. <coughs> they direct you in your workload, is that correct? Yes, uh, actually, you know, it's 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 a. Uh, I work daily with the manager. He and I are in one, one another's offices uh, a good part of every day. So it's it's a. Uh, it's it's a collaborative process. He's he's their eyes and ears too, but I, I communicate with the staff daily as well. Well, I'm I'm not quite sure. Are you saying the Board of Selectmen has assigned Fred to manager then? And no, but what I say is that uh, I'm sure that when when uh, Fred sees things that other boards, he, he's the one that's there daily, yeah. and Fred assists the board in managing of departments yeah. that, uh, that, that uh, report to them. Right, but you are, as a matter of the organizational structure, you report to the Board of Selectmen. They, they direct your workload. Uh, yes, as does the <coughs> as does the tax assessor. Let's okay. say. Yeah, and, and, and just to, to follow up on a question we had offline some weeks ago, who do you consider your client to be? Well, the cl that's 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 a, a major issue that seems to be addressed frequently at at uh, municipal conferences. Mm -hmm. The client is the town of Hampton. The selectmen manage the prudential affairs of the town, so they essentially manage what I do in the town's name. Okay, so you, uh, you, you would see your, 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 uh, your client is basically the citizens of the town of Hampton, basically. Well, and not, n I, I get that when people don't like what's going on. They come to me and they say, you work for me. No, I'm uh, not, no, no, that's not true, because you don't necessarily <laughs> work for your client directly. You're managed by somebody else, in this case, the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen uh, managed me, but as I say, in terms of who is the client, 
we, we have had a session before <coughs> with this board where I've answered questions you've had. And in those instances, there's an attorney-client privilege with the board that I'm talking to. And so, for instance, if I'm asked by the planning board to give input and I give <coughs> input to them, there's an attorney-client relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Same with the board of adjustment. So you're saying is you identify your client based on the context that you're working in at any given moment? Uh, that's, that's correct for the attorney-client privilege. Overall, <coughs> as you've said, I think the selectmen, if you were to say one group that who I report to, it's the selectmen. Well, that's who's managing you. Know, I'm asking who the yeah. client is. So whose interests are you pursuing at all times? Uh, the institution of the town of Hampton. The town of Hampton Incorporated, then. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and one, one last question. You, we're creating a uh, uh, part-time uh, position here. And as we've been told numerous times in numerous ways, we can't do anything without legislative or constitutional authority to do so because we don't have home rule. Uh, could you tell me what law under which we are creating this position? What is the legislative authority to create this position? Uh, well, the town employs employees. I'm an employee of the town. Mm -hmm. The town has authority to employ people. That's how I'm here. If we have no authority to employ people, then you won't see anybody sitting at this table. Right, but what, what law are we acting under when we create a position? Well, that's... The selectmen manage the prudential affairs of the town. If we're looking at... If you want to look at each department, who, who is the authority to create various positions? The answer may be different each time. The planning board... Well, that's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking what is, what is the legislative authority upon which this creation of any position in town, this one in particular, is created. I mean, it's in my impression, and I could be wrong, that's why I, we have attorneys, Yeah, uh, uh, that it's actually the legislative body's authority to create positions. Uh, actually, no. Um, there, there are a number of departments that have their own statute about that, there, there's a ban and who appoints them. No, 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 no. I mean the actual creation of the position, not how they get paid or who decides to hire or fire them, but the creation of a position itself. Well, you have, I think, if you're talking about this position, I would say it's RS. say 41 colon 8 which is the authority of the selectmen to manage the prudential affairs of the town 41 colon 8 yeah <coughs> thank you no it's further policy. questions thank you it's well it's, a it's not policy it's a question of legal it's, it's authority new I, I let it go for those of you that are questioning I'm letting it go we needed an answer to that it's creating a new position mm -hmm. right for that reason Right. Seem to be creating things all over the place in this budget. Sandy. Mark. Hi. Mark, Mark, Mark. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? And I'm well. Thank you very much. Um, so you don't have a clerk. No. So who's doing the clerk work? The two of us. Okay. So if I go into your office and you needed, I needed something, um, is it filed? Is it stacked up somewhere? But you know exactly where it is because you know what stack it's in, so you can go and locate it. Correct. <coughs> okay. Um, so I am not in favor, I'm sorry, because simply of what's going on out in the public, and times are tough, and to create a new position, which I think is the change is not NA, but the change is 100% because it's a new position. Um, so I really can cannot support it. Um, but I know that uh, positions are created within the fire and the police and uh, maybe public works. I'm not too sure about public works. But I think all those three departments year off um, in the summertime. Not not just fire and not just fire and police, but also in the beach area with the public works and the trash pickup, and sure. they also gear up in the winter because they're the ones out 
plowing the roads so people can get out to work. So um, I'd love to be able to support a clerk to help you all. But I can see that, you know, next year it may be coming in at more than 16 hours. And eventually it may be growing into a full-time position. So I think for right now, with our economy and what's going on, I think we kind of, I know, I know it's only $10,000, but I really think that we need to kind of look at it before we go forward with it. Next. Yeah, all done. I am done. Indeed. <coughs> First of all, you folks do an excellent job. Thank you. Thank I, you. And differ a bit with my esteemed colleague, Ms. Nicholson. Oh, I know your best friend. <laughs> I would, I have always been amazed well, I have never seen a law office, whether it was a single, a double, or ten people, that didn't have clerical help. It's <coughs> just, I don't know how you would function without it. Uh, I think it's important to remember that to have uh, barristers on deck for the tawdry sum of 40 and $60 an hour is a benefit to the town that is not only reflected in a budget that's lower than it could be, but it's lower than it ever was. If any one of us was to go out and retain counsel, 150, 190 is it. It's been that way a long time. Uh, again, I'm looking at the bottom <coughs> line. It's a level budget. It's a little bit less. I think you do a fantastic job. You save us untold thousands. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I would equally support the position you request. I look at it as you're doing something someone else could do at 66 bucks an hour, right. and that someone else could do it at 16 dollars an hour. My other question would be, what is the current outside counsel rate? It's uh, it, and on average, <coughs> it's 190 per hour, and that's a that's a rate that I've. I, I negotiate with each of the outside counsel who do service for the town for a lower rate than they normally charge. The average of those is 190. And I assume it's fair to say now some ministerial things are not being done that should be done because you can't do it all. Correct. Uh, or I or I uh, I typically work uh, a number of more hours than I'm paid for, and I'm not complaining. I think it's a great place to work. It's a great town to work for, uh, but I I, uh, I typically do work uh, 44 or more hours a week and am paid 35. I'm not complaining. It just comes the uh, the, the work has to be done. <coughs> the reality. It yeah. comes from somewhere. I I have um, the sixteen dollars an hour. Is that the going rate? I wouldn't want to underpay anybody. You know, we've already gone around with that. <laughs> is that, how did you establish that rate? Is that a, the going rate for a clerk? Well, a fair price? Uh, that's, th that's what's being paid to other part-time clerical price. personnel within the organization. Okay, so so the I'm trying to avoid it. You a have, exactly, and I understand that. Now, you mentioned 16 hours a week, and I just want to say that you want a team player that can work in Fred's office a little and maybe work for Mike a little here and there. But of course, we're going to keep this person under, what is it, 30 hours that, uh, you know, and look, the next thing you know, we've got another full-time employee with benefits and everything else. So Correct. Yeah, so it would be monitored carefully. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm in complete favor. And I, I want to mention that at the bottom of your letterhead, life in Hampton, a secret worth sharing. I like that. That's very good. Thank you. I don't want them all coming here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a secret. It's secret. It's a secret. I love Manhattan. <laughs> Mark, is this part-time individual a paralegal or just the? Uh... Well, I, 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 I think I'm not conceiving of it as being a paralegal. I doubt that we, at this point in time, could get someone at that rate. It's more clerical support. Obviously, if we had someone who was who was with those skills and wanted to work for that. It would be helpful. No, no, I just have to but agree I, it's with not, Bob. It's not I, I what would, I was aiming at. I would <laughs> agree with Bob and uh, and Dick that uh, I would rather see you doing legal work instead of filing work. And as far as the hours that you put in, I think if any of us have watched any of the meetings, 
and this guy is there, right? Planning board, zoning board, whatever. He's there with his stack of papers, so I um, have no problem with any part of this budget. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a few issues with this. You came on board. We gave you one to part time. I mean, can you talk up a little bit? Oh, We're can you hear me? I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. First, we got Mark, and then we got Juan to part time, and then we got you full time. And I know the workload has expanded, but if we go back to the beginning when we used to contract everything out, we're really growing this department every other year with something else. And we have a lot of needs in some of our other departments that have been stripped down to the bare bones. $16 an hour and change seems a little bit high. Is that the starting wage? Is, is that a new higher rate for clerical that we're paying? No, that's the rate that we are paying uh, others in the organization. But have those, pe have those been here for a while? Or are we just getting them up? This new hire going to be put at a pace that the others are that have been here for a little while? <coughs> Seems a little high. That's, that's the starting rate that we've been using for several years. And then uh, we also based it looking at the, uh, the union rates for the Teamsters. And they have moved beyond that. Their the starting rate is I think 60, <coughs> 62 for a clerical person in the union. But this person won't be in the union. Okay. So I, I wish we could stop the discussion about the union versus the non union and mix that and keep. Otherwise, everybody might as well just be in the union. Um, that's the thoughts that I have. Now, I know that if you have anything else piled up in your office, um, any more records, we're not going to find you. That's the other side of things. And all of our, these documents should, I wish they had been scanned from the beginning. <coughs> now you have a backlog of half a dozen years to get caught up on. And that's something that Fred was confronted with, Ed was confronted with. Ordinarily, I would be inclined to turn down this position having looked at the amount of work that has been done with the backlog of records in recent weeks, I'm not that inclined, but I do have concerns about how we're growing. I, I, I can see where the budget has been kept level, <coughs> but we should be experiencing a savings next year based on the fact that we're not going to have as many collective bargaining agreements to go forward with. So we're giving some of our savings away. Um, that's um, I'm letting out my thoughts on that. I would have been more in favor of having a universal <coughs> person to share with the other departments for some of this backlog that you have instead of everybody coming in and looking for one more person. And especially where we've given you expansion in recent years. That's that's my opinion on it. So <coughs> throw it out there. Do I mm -hmm. have? I hope. Oh, uh, can I make an amendment? Mm -hmm. Just to throw it out there. Can I make an amendment to the motion? Mm -hmm. Make the new bottom line figure for attorney fees one forty four zero thirty one. Could you repeat Removing that? the part time wages. I'm um, merely removing the 99.84. Okay, so you want to remove that from the bottom line. Do I have a second okay. for that? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Second, hold on. Get three in favor. And what was that final number, and Brian? Sunny? It's sunny, I think. By, by roll, keep your hands up because we're going to One forty-four zero thirty-one. So you've got the, 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 the number he's trying to give you is 225616, which is okay. the bottom line minus that 98. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Right? Sunny, was a sunny, sunny, are you yeah. in favor of that amendment? Yeah. 
I have my hand up. Mark, no. 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 And then on this side, Tim. Affirmative. And Sandy. No. No. Okay. Who are you? No. So, motion to All those. No, it fails. That fails. What was the count, Madam? I didn't feel the wind going up. Madam Chair, what was the count? Uh, the six. We have five yes, and we have a total of 14 people here, so nine no. Well, nine non yes, right? So you didn't call for no's, but. Uh, well, we may, and about all that abstained, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, I would suggest that we uh, we table this also and we'll have a chance to be sure that we have legal authority well, on the 40, 41 colon on 8. And I'm talking about this line item. I mean, this uh, this budget. I would like to uh, research and confirm that we have constitutional authority to create this position in this manner uh, with attorney's recommendation to refer to our say 41 colon 8. It won't take me long to look that up and research it. And it should, be, uh, it should be a non-problem once we do bring it back one. off the table. We already have a motion. Yeah, got we a have motion a motion, table, so. but you can come back at review, all right? So you can do research between now and then, okay. but I don't see a reason to table this. Um, I'll, but I'll take the consensus to table it. Tim, no one else? Okay. We'll close this one out, and if we have to, revisit and review. So we, need to, we need to. The amendment fails, the so amendment we go back to the original motion. motion. Right. The original motion was to approve the bottom line item for legal of $235,600. All in favor? <laughs> Mr. Dean is voting in favor. I just need the no. All right. All right. Okay. All opposed. And opposed. Opposed. Are you the chairman? Who's the chairman here? Hmm? Yeah. I'm just wondering who the chairman is. Mm -hmm. <coughs> At She's the you chairman. know, I mean, an equal opportunity employer here. Um, I mean, all right. Six. Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five. Okay. No extensions. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.